We are very grateful. That's a good way of reminding all of us, very comprehensive, uh, very comprehensive look at what we said last time, that the fact that if you truly want to lead people, you cannot become a dictator and hope that you become friends with people. And when they are not friends, they will obey you where they must. But one of the things that likely is you are likely to suffer from something we call malicious obedience. Malicious obedience is where people feel that they have to do what the dictator says, but they don't like him. So they obey, but without thinking, how will this help the organization? So, for example, the leader says, um, tomorrow, come at 5 o'clock in the morning and forget to say what will be done. So they come at 5 o'clock and just sit. Well, they, so why are you not working? He said, you didn't tell us to work at 5. And you can't argue that they are not obedient. They are obedient. But that's what we call malicious obedience. But the moment you start treating the people you work with, not as subordinates, but as your friends, they can ask you if there is a, something that needs clarification, they feel free enough with you. And you are not likely to suffer from malicious obedience. Malicious obedience is when somebody obeys, so you cannot punish them, but it does not help the organization at all. And that's what people who who dictate instead of leading, who are rough with the people they work with, they get malicious obedience. Today we want to deal with how a leader, if you truly are a leader, must be somebody who is proactive enough to think that emergencies are for real. That in this side of heaven, there is no organization that will not suffer some hiccups. If they don't come this year, they'll come next year. So it's the responsibility of a leader to proactively think of the possibilities of challenges, the types of challenges, what we can do to stop them, and if we are unable to stop them, how we can come out of them. And uh, when you have a leader who is an optimist, never thinks anything can go wrong, the moment something goes wrong, an emergency happens. He is paralyzed. He can't think. And it's a great weakness because the average person doesn't like thinking about things going bad. But a leader cannot have uh, the luxury of assuming that everything must turn out right. It is his responsibility to think about the future, about the vision, think about what can go right, but also think about what could go wrong and prepare for both. That's what leadership is all about. And it's my prayer that um, God in his wisdom will help every one of us to know that's what leadership is about. All your friends are enjoying the meeting. All your friends are, are enjoying what's happening. But a leader is thinking, will the next speaker come? What about if he doesn't come? What should I do? Instead of sitting pretty and enjoying themselves, a leader is thinking about next. Others are sleeping overnight, enjoying. But a leader in the evening wonders, tomorrow, how will the seminar be? How, what will happen with the work? But the followers, the people with the leader, just do what needs to be done. They don't have to go ahead. And that's why it's important. So you need to understand clearly that if you are truly a leader, you must assume an emergency will come sooner or later. You know, one of the problems we have is, is, as Africans is against our culture to imagine something going wrong. In fact, if I told you something could go wrong and it went wrong, you accuse me of being a witch. And because nobody wants to be accused of being a witch, we can see how the son of so is behaving will be in trouble. But we don't tell him. We don't tell the parents. Because we don't want that when something happens, we'll be accused of being witches. We wait until the, the, the son is totally destroyed, 
And they say, I knew it. I knew I could see clearly. If you knew it, how come you never thought anybody would have helped to prevent it happening? It's our culture, wrong culture, which we must fight and come out against. If you can see something might happen, just share the information. Now, if you share, and then it turns out the emergency never happens, there's nothing much you have lost. But if it turns out the emergency happens, and you knew you could have done something to prevent it, surely, how, as a Christian, would you consider yourself to be at peace with yourself and peace with God? Whether it is within our families, or within our businesses, or within our churches, if you have been given the, gift, the leadership gift, one thing you'll know is that you always think ahead. After all, a leader is a person who goes ahead and others follow. It will mean you force yourself to think both of what can go right and what can go wrong. Because both, both are, are going to be important and it will be something that you must be aware, aware of. My, my, my hope is that you think of yourself in every leadership role in that way. Let's just look at First uh, Samuel chapter 21 and see David going through an emergency. Verse 1 says, David went to Nob to Ahimelech, the priest. Ahimelech trembled when he met him and asked, Why are you alone? Why is no one with you? David answered Ahimelech, the priest. The king sent me on a mission and said to me, no one is to know anything about the mission I'm sending you on. As for my men, I have told them to meet me at a certain place. Now then, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread and whatever you can find. You know, <laughs> here is an emergency. What's an emergency? Jonathan has just confirmed in First Samuel chapter 20 that the king is looking for David to kill him. And so he needs to run away as fast as possible. He can't even go home to collect anything. And he has not eaten. So he passes through the priest and uh, asks for any food. Food provision is a critical requirement as proactive prayer for any emergency. That's why if you are the a kind of a person preparing for emergency, you normally have dry foods like biscuits. Biscuits can last a year, two years. They can last a long time. And if you are likely to go on an emergency, always remember to carry something that can give you energy. If you go, for example, in an accident emergency, and you assume it is something you are going to go for to, and, and finish within hours, what about if it, the, the whole process takes overnight and you have not eaten? Number, by the morning, you will start making wrong decisions because of hunger. So it means that food provision is a critical requirement. As you think about emergencies, as you prepare for emergencies, think, where will the team that is handling the emergency get their refreshments from? And it will be very important to understand. It's because human beings, thinking capacity, acting capacity is reduced when energy levels go down. Look at verse 4. But the priest answered David, I don't have any ordinary bread on hand. However, there is some consecrated bread here, provided the men have kept themselves from heavy women. David replied, Indeed, women have been kept from us, as usual, whenever I set out. The men's bodies are holy, even when missions that are not, even on missions that are not holy. How much more to so today? So the priest gave him the consecrated bread. See, there was no bread there except the bread of the presence that had been removed from before the Lord and replaced by hot bread on the day it was taken away. My friend, in a, when you are going through an emergency, niceties are sacrificed. You don't start saying, but you know, biscuits are not a balanced diet. No. Anything that will make you last that you can deal with the emergency is what you actually need. You know, during a war, birthday parties, even for even for the for for, 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 for the king's son, are suspended. And that's one of the things the leader will, will ask himself as you prepare for emergency. 
you only think about what's critical requirement, not parties and luxuries. In an emergency, I repeat, necessities must be sacrificed. You can be too busy trying to say, you didn't call me, you didn't call me brother, you called me just John. That is not, not the kind of things you talk about when you are dealing with uh, an emergency. Look at verse 7. Now, when one of Saul's servants was there, now, one of Saul's servants was there that day, detained before the Lord. He was Doeg the Edomite, Saul's chief shepherd. My friend, you must trust yourself in God's hands, even when you face the friend of your, especially when you face the friends of your enemy. Can you imagine, of all people, when he is running away, who does he meet near, the, near, where, near their prayer place? But the chief shepherd of the enemy, King Saul. And later we read that David said, I knew it. As soon as I saw the Edomite, I knew the priest would be in trouble. And actually, this priest was given, was giving bread to David. Later was murdered by Saul. You need to trust yourself in God's hands to give you wisdom. And protect you from things. And this, I'm saying all this in order to tell you, even with the best preparation and best wisdom, only God can help you deal with the emergency right. How would David have known that this enemy's friend or chief shepherd was going to be uh, with a priest? He thought by going to a priest, he's going to a person he can trust. So similarly, prayer is one of the best and most important tools in dealing with emergencies. And not just praying during the time, because during an emergency, you may not even have time to pray, rather than shout um, uh, a prayer. It is covering yourself with the prayer continuously, on a daily basis, saying, God, I'm preparing for this, but there may be issues I don't even know about. God help me and give me wisdom. David, unfortunately, has put the life of um, the priest in jeopardy by meeting the Edomite. Verse 8, David asks Ahimelech, don't you have a spear or a sword here? I haven't brought my sword or any other weapon because the king's mission was urgent. The priest replied, the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, is here. It is wrapped in a cloth behind the effort. If you want it, take it. There's no sword here but that one. They better say, there is none, there is none like it. Give it to me. Muchagua jembe si mkulima. In an emergency, you use what is effective, not what is necessarily efficient. You, you want to accomplish something. One of the key things you require in an emergency, in an emergency is security. That's why when you go to a roadside and there has been an accident, the first thing the police do is not even to deal with the, with the actual emergency. They put a red tape around the place in order to ensure others don't come and deal with, the, with a, a, a place where they may be investigating later or come and jeopardize the people already in danger. Security and safety are important in an emergency. So a leader, thinking about a possibility of an emergency, must always ask, not just where the food is, but also how can we ensure we handle this emergency without bringing more trouble? Because you can go to handle an emergency and create a bigger one. Like you have heard of swimmers. Somebody is, is, is sinking. Then somebody comes to save him, but both of them end up dying. Because unless you are careful how you are going to handle the person that is, that, is, that is sinking, he could easily hold you and go down with you. So it means that if you are going to help, think about safety. The same thing you are told when you are going to deal with a fire emergency. Don't fight the fire unless you know how you can escape if the fire becomes bigger. You are told to always approach the fire from the exit point, so that when the fire becomes too big, 
you can run away. Security and safety are very important. So the leader must always think about the safety and security of the people involved in the emergency. Verse 10. That day David fled from Saul and went to Ashish, king of Gath. But the servants of Ashish said to him, Isn't this David, the king of the land? Isn't he the one they sing about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. You know, where has David run? He now has the bread, and he has the, he has the, there's a sword. He is running away. Where does he go? Of all places, he goes to the Philistines. Why? He knows that the enemy of your enemy is your friend. Saul's enemy is, is the king of the Philistines. So he knows if he goes there, Saul cannot get him there. The best place to hide is with the enemy of your enemy. And you need to understand clearly, that's one of the things you must always think about. If you are dealing with an emergency, be very careful that you do not place yourself in your enemy's hands. By going to the friend of your enemy in an emergency, you just add over, you're adding over yourself to the enemy. And it's, that's something that you need to think about. So, even as you think about how to handle an emergency, think about intelligence, collecting intelligence, understanding what's happening, what's in the background, who is involved. All that will be something that is important. That David seems to have done it in handling his emergency. Verse 12, David took these words to heart and was very much afraid of Akshichi, king of God. Which words? Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. Can you imagine? They have had their neighboring kingdom. So they know this, that David, that is a fierce fighter who wins against the Philistines. And now he has come to hide among, the, among them. The king doesn't take it seriously. But you please understand, David could see the implication. A leader needs to see more than the eyes can see or hear more than the ears, the ears can hear. It's the ability of the leader to go beyond the obvious. You hear the words. You look at the implications. And you look at what it could, it could mean. You see something and you see beyond what you are seeing. This is what we call in the New Testament the spirit of discernment. And that's a, something, especially if you are going to have an emergency, that's something a leader requires, that God would help him to be the kind of a person who knows how to handle, to see beyond what he can see. But that thing says, so he pretended to be insane in their presence, and while he was in their hands, he acted like a madman, making marks on the doors of the gate and letting saliva run down his beard. What is he doing? He does not want to have to tell the king exactly why he has come, how he has come, so he pretends to be mad. In an emergency, please learn to communicate what you want the enemy to hear, not everything. And I have written a book called Integrity, the Little Masters of Good Leadership. And in the book, I argue, you don't have to lie, but you don't have to give information that will give you, will put you into trouble. So the guy just decides to be mad, therefore he can't communicate anything. So he can't lie. And the actually helped him. So when you're handling an emergency, you need that ability of saying, what information must be given? What information... Can, cannot be given to so-and-so, but it can be given to so-and-so. Verse 14 says, that he said to his servants, look at the man. He is insane. Why bring him to me? Am I so short of madmen that you have to bring this fellow here to carry on like this in front of me? Must this man come into my house? You know, at times, being not a fool is an advantage. And that's what David have opted. People think he's a fool. What they don't know is that that idea will help him. And I, I think that's, um, that's something that when people, no, 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 don't think about it. Don't you know I have a PhD? Don't you know I am? No, 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 no. There are times when putting yourself in that way will get you into trouble. May the Lord help us 
as we think about the various, the various emergencies that may come our way, that the same God who has promised to be with us to the close of this age will help us and the groups we lead to be better prepared and therefore help our group not to end up in trouble. Thank you very much. Back to Lois. Thank you very much.